Hey guys, welcome in second part of form validation in React. My name is Philip, and this Encode lecture. So without any further waiting, let's start. And if you didn't follow my previous lecture, you need to set up your project. Okay, so you can do so by cloning my GitHub repository or by downloading my GitHub repository and checking out into a specific version of the project. Detailed explanation of how to set up my project you can find in the first video from this series in a link included in a description of this video. So if you, if you don't know how to set up this project, you can simply go into a description and you can watch a lecture which will guide you in a, and it will give you a steps how to set up this project. All right, so we can start. And if you followed my previous lecture, we have been working on a simple validation. So please open your Open your terminals, and if you are already in a Git branch of a validation we have been working before, we need to check out from this branch, we need to go to master branch, and we need to go to a version of the project 1.2. Okay, so we need to you need to commit the actual branch changes. You need to write here git add space and a dot and a git commit dot uh, dash m, and you will write here some commit message, let's say adds validation. All right, I will clear a screen now. We'll verify we are still in a validation branch. Now we want to go to master branch. Let's write here simply git checkout master. This will get you to a master branch. So git branch again, you should be in a master. Now you can check out into a version 1.2. So you can write here git checkout dash b. You can write here validation uh, part two a space and now version 1.2. So we are checking out from this version. Let's press enter and you should uh, write here git branch and you should see here validation part two. Now you can clear your screen. You can run here npm install to be sure everything, every all of your packages will be installed correctly and you can run npm run dev, npm run dev. Okay, after that, when now your servers are running, we can start working on more complicated validation and more complicated inputs in our portfolio form. Okay, so with which inputs I would like to work on our inputs for a, for a date. I would like to add here to my portfolio start date and end date. So I will close this and we'll search here for a React date picker. React date picker. You can navigate to react-datepicker-npmjs.com and we are looking for this package, all the documentation you can find here. You can find here also demo and with all of the properties you need to use. Also very nice examples and how to use a date picker. Okay, of course I will not go through this in this short video or actually short one. Usually my videos is like 20, 30 minutes. So yeah, let's go back to React Date Picker and first we need to install it picker and to use it. Okay, so let's copy this installation command. Let's go to terminal. Let's shut down our server one more time and let's paste it here and let's write here dash dash save. So this package will be added into your package.json. Let's press enter. This will install this package. And guys, if you are looking for a more in-depth guide and more lectures, how to create this complete project, follow my Udemy course or check einco.com for more courses and step-by-step uh, -step guides. All right, so let's continue uh, this install. So we can run here npm run dev to start up again our server and we can, we can set up our date pickers component. So how can we set up them? We can go simply here and let's search here. Let's go down here. First, we need to import CSS file. Then we need to import date picker and simply use a date picker. There you need to provide two props selected, which will be your date. And also on change function will be which will be responsible for changing your date. Okay, so first I will copy this import of a CSS. Let's copy it. Let's go back to our coding editors. And you can import it. I can close this. You can import it into your pages underscore app.js. Just above your styles index as CSS, you can import React Date Picker.css. Let's save this. Now you can go to your components folder shared portfolio form and here you can get React Date Picker. So just simply above this form, let's import React Date Picker. I will just verify it, how we can import it. Okay, like this, so I will copy it. Okay, let's go back to our coding editors. Let's import React, React Date Picker, so Date Picker from React Date Picker. 
All right, and uh, now let's use it. So let's go down, and we will register. We will register these uh, date pickers under under description. So under description, I will create some more space, and we'll create here a class name of forum group. Okay, so we'll copy this part here. We'll get here class name of forum group. Uh, let's close it. Let's write here also label for a start date on end date. So let's write here. It will be for a uh, start. Uh, date a label we need to provide our HTML4 so HTML4 and it will be star date all right and under under this label will be actual input so let's let's wrap it into a div and let's use here date picker so date oops date date picker like this and this can be self closed component okay as you could see before we need to provide here two props. So we need to provide here selected and on change function to select that for now. We don't have any value for our selected input. So let's write here for now, it will be null. All right. And on change function will be executed every time you will change your date. So for now, just simply let's write here empty callback function like this. Okay. And also we'll provide here a uh, show years dropdown, show years dropdown. This will display also a year dropdown in your date picker. Now we can copy the whole form group and we can create this input for end date. So under this, I will create this input for end date. So let's write here end date, date picker, show your dropdown, selected, on change, it will stay the same. Let's save this now, now and let's verify our inputs was were created. Let's go back to our browser. All right, let's see our applications, let's refresh. And you can see here already start date and end date and you have an option here to select the date. But as you can see, of course, you are not providing these values inside of your inputs because we are hard coding here that our selected date is always null and that's why we are not displaying any date even after we are changing it. And also our onChange function is not setting this date into any state. So that's why we are not displaying here, as we are not displaying here any date. So onChange function, I should mention this, on in onChange function, we are passing callback function which will receive a date actual date we are clicking on. So when I will write here, let's write here alert and it will alert this date. Also let's write this alert to our end date. Okay, like this. Let's save this, let's go back to our browsers. Let's refresh. Now when I will choose here start date and I will change it, you can see here we are displaying here our start date. I choose, chose here June of 10 and you can see here June of 10 was selected. Okay, okay. I can change, check here, let's say 9th of June, and you can see here 9th of June has been selected, Central European summertime. All right, let's press OK, and we can do the same for end date. So end date and 16th, and alert date. OK, to on change, we are not passing a date, so just very simple fix. Let's see here our end date and pass here on change date. Now it should work. Okay, so 15, 14 and 14 has been selected. All right, so now, of course, we would like to change these dates. We would like to set these dates into, into our form. Okay, so how, how can we do it? Let's go back to our coding editors. And as you know, in the normal way, we would if we would have normal input com element, we would provide a ref attribute and it would register our inputs. But we don't have any ref attributes in our date picker, so how can we do it without specifying here ref? Let's go up here. You can use here use effect function because use effect function will be executed only once. Okay, so let's write here. Let's import here use effect function from React. Okay, so import use effect from React. Okay, actually this function is executed multiple times, but if you want to get it executed only once, you can register it under here, use effect, you will provide a callback function inside, and you will specify here empty dependency array, which will mean that the function will be executed only once when your portfolio form will be initialized. And in the use effect, you can register your new inputs. So I can write here register. I can call it with an object where I will specify name of my new input. So I'll write here name and my name of the input will be star date. Okay, star date. And I will specify here also the type of a co component is a custom like this. And that's it. I will register my second input and I will call it end date. All right, here it is. 
register name and date and a type is a custom one more time. Okay, guys, so uh, now let's save this. And then you will go to your browsers and then you, then you will try to submit your form. So let's provide your title, company, website, location, job title, description. Let's submit this. You cannot still see here started and ended because we didn't assign any values to our form. So now when we are clicking on our dates, we need to set a value to our form. Okay, let's do it. Let's go back to our coding editors. Okay, as you can see here, when we are clicking on our date pickers, we are executing on change where we are passing a date, when we are getting a date and we are alerting this date. What we want to do instead, we would like to set this date into a state of our form, of our use form here. Use form is uh, exposing very helpful, fun hel helpful function called uh, set value. So let's get here this function here, set value. And now we, when we are alerting our dates, instead of alerting them, we can set the values of them. Okay, so I can set the value here. So let's copy this function. Let's go down here to our date pickers and simply when we are alerting here, we can simply call here set value. First, you will provide a name of your input you would, you would want to set this value to. So you want to set our value to a start date and the value will be our date. And the same we will do for our end date. And uh, let's change here. This should be HTML for end date. And this should be set value for end date. OK, let's save this now. Let's go back to our browsers. And now, when you will select here some dates, OK, of course, you are still not displaying them here because our selected is still null. But now, when you will provide your values, you should be able to see this dates in your form. So you can see here start date and end dates are actually here. You can see start date and the end dates are here. The dates are a little bit different as you can see here because your date has been transformed into a UTC time. So I choose here before 17th of uh, June, but here is a 16, but this is a UTC time. I am currently in a European central time zone, which is a plus two hours. So that's why it's displayed here 22 time because 22 plus two would be uh, 17th of June, and that's correct. So don't worry if you're displaying here a different time as you choose here. This is the UTC format, and this format is correct. Okay, so now we are displaying our dates, but we would like to propagate this uh, state of our form of a start date and end date into our inputs here. So how can we do it? Okay, let's go back to our coding editors. We can do it very simply. Uh, use form is exposing very helpful, also other helpful function called watch. Okay, and with a watch function, you can watch changes of your inputs in your form. So you can, for example, I can define here under register uh, values for a start date. Well, I can define here value for an end date and I can vo watch, uh, watch my form change. So I can write here this watch function and into watch, you will provide the name of your input. You would like to watch these values. So for example, here, I would like to watch changes of a start date. So I'll watch here changes of a start date and here in the end date, I would like to watch the changes of the end date. And now I can get these values of a start date and an end date, and I can provide them into my date picker here. So here on the selected, I can provide here a start date. And here a selected of a date picker, I can provide here end date. Now when I will save this, let's go back to our browsers. You should be able to see here when you will select here date, this date will be also displayed. And now it's working very nicely. Perfect. Okay, guys, so one more or a couple of more improvements. So let's go back to our coding editors. I would like to simplify on change here. I don't want to call here set value and set value here, but I would like to create a custom function which will be setting the values to our start date and end date. So what I will write here up here, under, let's say under use effect, I will write here a new function. I will call it handle date change handle date change, where I will receive in the parameters of this function our date type, which can be start date or end date. So date type and a date itself, okay? And then simply I can call a set value here, where I will provide a date type, which will be which will be start at or end at, depending on which input I'm clicking on, and a date which we are providing to handle date change. Now I can simply get this handle date change function, 
And instead of a calling here set value, I can call here handle date change where I will provide a star date. And I will provide here, I'll provide here actual date. Okay, maybe you don't see much improvement in this, and indeed, it's not really the big deal here because in a handle date change, we are still calling set value, but we can we can simplify it even nice, nice, nicer. So first, let's get here end date and a date. We can verify if it's working. So let's save this. Let's go back to our browsers. Okay, let's refresh. Let's click here start date, and we can send a date. So yeah, this is working, and now let's simplify it even more. So now you can see here to on change, we need to pass a function that will receive a date, and in this function, we'll execute handle date change. So what about if we would pass here function that will return a function which will receive a date? How can we do it? Simply, I will change my function handle date change to a function that return a function. So I'll write here const handle date change. I will comment out this function, and this function will be function that's returning another function, and this function will, re will receive a date. Uh, you can simplify it even more when you want to use arrow functions. You can just simply write like this. It's a function that, re that return function, OK? The first function will receive a date type, and this, uh, the second function will receive a date from an input. Now I can call here set value as before with my uh, date type and a date. All right, so everything as before. Now I can get this handle date change, and I can simplify it very in a very nice manner. So to handle to on change, I can simply just provide handle date change. Then I will provide the handle date change for a star date, and to a second on change, I will say here handle uh, date change of an end date. Then you will execute handle date change. This will return simply function that accepts a date. So the, the signature of this will stay unchanged. OK, but it's a much nicer the way it's a much, it's a much nicer way how to how to provide a, how to provide this function to on change. OK, now when you will save this, you will go to browsers. Everything will work as before. I will refresh. I will select your start date and I can select the start date and I can select the end date. All right, guys, so everything is working now. We should be able to provide all the information, a website, and everything should work. We should be able to log these information. Yes, it's working. But now, what about validation in, uh, in this case? We would like to validate, uh, we would like to validate our inputs. OK, so for this, we need to create, of course, validator. OK, so let's go back to our coding editors. And just under first letter upper, I will create a new validator. And we can call it, uh, what, first, what we would like to validate for. I would like to validate if my date is not in the future. What I mean, what I mean by that is that I, would, I don't want to allow to choose a date that are in the future. So currently, it's a 19 of June. I don't want to allow to choose a date, for example, 22 of June, or I don't want to allow the dates from a year of 2023. All right, so any date that is in the future, I don't want to allow to choose here. So for this, we need to create a validator. Okay, let's go back and let's write here a const and a function name will be called is date in the future. Is date in, in the future. As you know, with the validators, we are receiving our validation input uh, value in parameters of this function. So I, will, I can simply just get here date. OK, so this will be our value we'll be receiving here. OK, if you don't have a date, uh, simply return me here. In this case, let's return me here false, because we need to always provide a date. OK, uh, then we need to get a current date. We need to get our day to day. OK, so. I, I need to get here date of a 19 of June. If I would be testing it tomorrow, it would be 20 of June. I would like to get here 20 of June because I would like to always compare it to a current date. So I will create here a variable called today. And when you want to get a today date, you can just simply, simply create an instance of a new date like this. And you will set the hours to this date. So today and I set hours to a 0, 0, 0. And this will get you date of a midnight of a new day. OK, so now we have a day, uh, today date. And I will say here, if today is bigger 
then date we are setting in our input, this means our date is in a future, or actually it should be other way around. If a today day, if a date we are choosing in an input is bigger than today, then this means in the future that the date is bigger than today. This means uh, date is in future. In that case, we would like to return from here false because this means our input is not valid. So let's return from here false. Okay, otherwise just simply return me here true. Okay, and now we can provide these validators into our into our register here. So when we are registering our inputs, we can provide here a validate a validate uh, object. So you can provide your second object into a register where you will specify validate key and to validate, validate you will specify another object which you will provide your uh, your validators our validators validator is called is date in the future so i will get it and i will provide it inside of the validate i will copy this validator and i will copy it i will copy it here one more bracket okay so validate is date in the future so after it for your form will be submitted these validators will be executed so now I can check here. First, let's copy some of our errors. So let's copy, for example, this error here. Or uh, actually the error, this error here, because here we are specifying only we are checking, we are checking here also for a type. Let's copy this error and let's provide it under a start date and end date. So let's say under this date picker, I'll write it here. And we are checking here for errors of uh, start star date and we are checking for errors star date of a type we are checking for a type is date in a future is date uh, we can copy it so is date in a future i will get it down here let's see where we have our input okay so here is date in a future if the date is in a future uh, let's write here you can choose you can choose only present or past day like this and let's copy this error and let's get it under this date picker here and here let's check for end date and uh, if the errors end date type is date in the future exactly the same message will stay here okay uh, let's save this now uh, let's go back to our browsers let's refresh, let's click here create and you can see here you can choose only present or past date you can choose only present or past date so when I will choose here some past date I will click here create, this error should disappear they disappeared, when I will choose here after I will choose, I will choose here future date I will click here create, you can see here you can choose only present or past date so these errors are displaying but we would like to also hide and display these errors when we are clicking instead of the input. So you can see when I will choose here past date, my validator is not re-executed. It's not re-executed because we need to re-execute re it manually in our code. Okay, so let's go back to our code editors. And we can do it in our function where, when we are handling the change of our dates into handle date change. So we can check here if a date is in the future and if a date is in the future, we can set errors, okay, into our inputs. Okay, so uh, we can reuse this. We can reuse it our validator function to check if our date is in the future. So we can write here if if date is in the future, if it's date in the future, where we'll provide our date from this function here. So let's check here for a date. Then we would like to set here error. But remember, is date in the future is returning false here because this validator and validator returning false whenever you want to throw the error. But here we would like to check here for true, because in the case it's true, we would like to set here errors. So we, what we need to do here, we need to negate this expression. You need to just write here exclamation mark in the front. Okay, so if a date is in the future, we would like to set here error. For this, we can use another helpful function from a use form called set error and also let's let's get your function called clear error okay so if date is in the future we, will, we would like to set error here so let's write here set error you will provide the name of your input which is our date type it's a start date or end date so date type here 
and also you will uh, you will provide here a name of your validator so date type and also name of your validator which is uh, is date in the future i will just uh this validator is date in the future okay so we we can, we know to which uh, validator we can assign this error all right so set error here date type uh and is that in the future otherwise if we don't have any errors we just want to clear error so let's write here clear error and again you will provide your date type and also validator so date type and is date is date in the future uh like this and set valuable state unchanged here okay let's save this now and let's verify it so let's go back to our browsers all right, so now let's click here, start date. Let's use your bigger date. And you can see here, you can choose only present or a past date. Let's use here again, some date in an end date. You can choose only present or past date. When I will choose here past date, now this error is appeared. You can choose here some uh, informations. Let's create, it's created. When I will change, change it for a future date, I will create, it will be not submitted any longer. You don't see here any alert, so it's working as it should be. Perfect. All right, so guys, this is working. We can also simplify a few things. Let's go back to our account editors. And for example, we can simplify uh, this function, uh, not this function, is date in the future instead of this uh, we can return here only. Uh, we can return here only one expression. So I can return from here. Uh, date is larger than today. But don't forget, we need to return here false in a case this expression is true. So we need to negate this expression like this exclamation mark in the front. All right, let's save this. Uh, let's go back to our browsers. Let's refresh, and now it should work as before. Okay, you can choose only present or a past date. Everything is working. All right, guys, so that's that's custom validation. If you want to learn more about the Next.js Node API environment, you can just simply follow eindco.com or you can follow some of my courses on Udemy. You can find the links to it in the resources of this lecture. I have very nice guides. It, it, this guide has really like 40, 60 hours of content, so that's a lot of lectures. You can learn how to programming from a scratch. Okay, if you have any questions, write them here in the uh, in comment section. Check the description of this video. And yeah, for more lectures of this series, you can just uh, follow my YouTube channel. Okay, guys, so that should be it. And I hope to see you in uh, next lectures. Cheers.